Welcome to the XY Advisor Podcast, where it's our goal to help you become the best financial advisor possible and drive the positive evolution of financial advice. G'day, Clayton here. This is a podcast in the marketing series uh, as Dan Brown has increased his inbound uh, requests for meetings by 400% in the last 12 months. Now, that's the high level sort of grab your attention um, headline, and it's true. So he spoke about this at our Newcastle event as a part of our on tour events. And I bumped into him in Cebu, Philippines, where we were both at the VBP annual conference. And, uh, and we got chatting and, I mean, those kind of numbers, right? 400% 12 months. You don't hear that very often. And I wanted to take, I guess, what we'd spoken a little bit about in the meeting at Newcastle and turn it into a full podcast and give him 100% of the attention, like where does his advice journey start and how did he end up where he is and what's what's the sort of the ingredients to increasing your traffic by such a huge amount, which he was very gracious enough to share with us. So hopefully you enjoy. This episode is proudly sponsored by FE Analytics. Now, a number of XY advisors have already discovered this one-stop easy to use tool that helps with investment research, analysis, portfolio construction, ongoing monitoring, and client reporting. Find out how FE Analytics can help you improve your business process, manage your existing client base, and win new business by contacting Bruce Jenner via bruce.jenner, J-E-N-N-E-R, at financialexpress.net or visit financialexpress.net for more information. G'day, g'day, how's it going? What do you know? Strike a like. Clayton here from XY Advisor. Um, we're at XY Abroad at the moment. We're in the Philippines in Cebu. Um, and I'm here with Daniel. And Daniel has spoken, well, you've spoken at an XY event not that long ago in Newcastle. Yep. And, um, and we kind of got in touch just to follow up on that because... You've had such a huge, like, uplift in, you know, business and activity sort of in the more recent part of your business life. Um, And what was really interesting is we only had, say, around 50 people talk about it at Newcastle. Um, And so now that we're both here in Cebu... Lovely Cebu. Well, yeah, Cebu. Just um, casually hanging out on the other side of the world. We, I figured if we sort of took that conversation and made it public to more advisors, I think they would probably find that helpful. Um, could you give us a little bit of a background uh, to, from, I guess, how you got into advice and where you where you sort of come to now? Yeah, so started back in... Um, oh. Say 2000, I worked in uh, for One Path at the time, and on the other side, and um, th- sort of had an uncle, or probably end up by being my first mentor, um, saying, you know, get into financial planning, start studying. So I did, and then he said, you need to learn selling. So I went and sold insurance, and then uh, on a weekday, I must have accepted his offer to come and start working with him. <laughs> uh, so in November 2003, so I was very young, and he threw me straight in the deep end. Um, learned. Uh, from an early age that I didn't really enjoy the paperwork side of things. I was a people person, um, much like him. Uh, and so uh, that evolved from there. So I built, um, saw clients that were existing of his or saw new ones and just continued to grow and learn. And I think I've continued on that journey and really connected with being the entrepreneur side of things or running the business more these days. But yeah. it's definitely been an enjoyable journey. Yeah. One, one of the things you mentioned, and it's I, like... The focus on sales, it's such a weird thing because I'm so in two minds about sales. On one hand, massive fan of it, capitalism doesn't work unless you know someone buys something else. So yeah. sales is really important and it's, um, it's such an important part of the financial planning process because you need that person to uh, buy into what it is that you're selling. 
right? And so there, there's certainly a way to communicate that, um, you know, through frameworks or, or however you want to best um, promote that. But the weird thing is, way before you learn how to be good at sales, you shit at sales, right? Like, I was shit at sales, and yet it's kind of the first thing a lot of the times that people want you to get good at in financial planning, like, especially much more back in the day, but even still sort of today, it's kind of like, it's the skill that is the first thing that needs to get taught because I guess if there's no business, you may have the greatest thing in the world. Um, But at the same time, I feel like maybe a, a huge majority of the problems that our industry has had has come from the fact that we've been good at the sales piece and then, you know, crisis of identity, which is what is financial planning post FOFA? Yep. What is a client value proposition? You know, like the fact that that was even a conversation is really weird, right? Like how, how does a business operate without a CVP? I mean, you need to be solving a problem in the market. And so... I'm super in two minds about sales. What I what I've landed on is I believe in that sales is a valuable skill set if you've got all the other stuff in place, if you know how to deliver value, right, then yes, your job should be to get as many people through the door as possible. But up until that point, it's kind of like it can kind of make a company seem more successful than it is. Um, so you now, and the reason I sort of say all that is because one of the things we were talking about before uh, we started the podcast was ethics in business and delivering value and being, and you're going to have to walk me through this framework again, but being driven by your values and being driven to deliver value has taken you to where you've become. Um, so taking you to where you've arrived now you've become this value driven financial planning company but you started out like most in sales yep. and so um, does what I'm saying resonate at all or yeah or? so I think um, like to, you, you don't have, without a, uh, having a very strong marketing and branding and sales process in your business that's the, like the core of fuel to your business totally. and if you're not good at either any of them you need to be you know, it's, you're going to fail. So, so selling is adding value and adding yeah. value is different for every person. So you've got to have some level of flexibility there. And it's just being confident in what you're you know, articulating. Yeah. And so the other person, if they can understand the value, they'll always buy. So, and we do that in day-to-day life and m- many other bigger businesses do it far different and probably to our unconsciousness far better than what we do as advisors. Um, you know, we have all these things and acronyms that we have to articulate to someone and break it down. But if they can understand uh, the simplicity that it is in the end, um, you know, they'll buy. Yeah. So I think, and then the other, and just having the right mindset about it, which is what we were referencing before yeah, we yeah, started yeah. about that model that I love to use, which is uh, be do have. Um, so it's not um, like when I'm selling, it's about giving uh, an experience of myself. So. Um, was it like a premonition once with a client went out to see them and they started talking to me about music and I said oh I've just been to the big day out oh, that was the days um, <laughs> and before they do it they just said oh yeah we, we went too and then they'd been and liked all the same bands and it was like a, a click the more I become and show up how I want to be more of myself 100% myself uh, then I go about how I want to do advice or do business or interact with people 24-7 that I'll have what I need to have uh, and most goal setting is set the other way around. Um, I really challenge, as we were talking about, challenge that status quo and removing um, you know, time frames from goals and things like that and really engage with people that way. Um, so, you, you remove time frames from goals? Yeah, so um, I just think that's a li- uh, one of my sayings um, is no limiting beliefs. Um, so, you know, if you put a, uh, I just want to get a new car, uh, I don't know what people would buy these days, they hardly drive these days, I just uh, walk everywhere to work. Um, but so they bought a new Mazda and they said, I want to spend a Mazda and uh, it's going to be $30,000 and I'm going to buy it in 12 months' time. 
you know, I, I would say I would challenge that person, and I ask our advisors and coach them to do the same. Is that how do you challenge that and actually remove the time frame? Because how do you can how can you change your mindset to go about having an abundant mindset or mentality to get you know why couldn't you do it in six months or why does that just have to be thirty thousand dollars or if it's a house or any other you know? So how can we go about and then, for example, that might lead to a discussion as you know, finding ways to create more income or uh, do you really need all the assets or do you need to be doing your cash flow? So it links heavily to financial planning, the standard 101 process, but challenges them around, you know, could they get do an extra course and get qualified to get that next level of uh, income? Uh, that would get them a better car or a different car. So Awesome. Right, so, you, so, you, so you like, or one of the things that you like to do is say, okay, you're a financial planner that, can, sorry, you're, you're a client that wants to achieve X, but I think we can probably help you get to X, but in a more efficient, effective way, and that's what you're coaching your financial planners to deliver as value. Yeah, absolutely. That's pretty cool. Yes, yeah, so it's just, um, I mean, you know, absolutely, use frameworks to articulate that as well. You know, a lot of people come in, they haven't had a, you know, if it's a husband and wife, I, you know, depending on how you view the world or your experience, or, you know, they generally have. Uh, opposites attract theory, I like that. So, you know, one's a spender, one's a saver. They haven't mm. had a conversation about it. So you get them in a room <clears throat> and a framework I like to use is then say, well, you know, do you want to continue to have a, a scarcity-driven mindset or uh, looking at the world a certain way or could we potentially challenge that and say, well, what happens if I could have everything? What happens if I could retire and have the lifestyle that I've ever always desired? Um, you, know, you know, give money to the grandkids now. Why can't I do that? Or, you know, so... If, I, if we run our meetings at that way, driven around scarcity as an example, then we, you know, it's just a cookie cutter approach. Have we really changed, have we had impacted on their life? No, we've just let them continue to do so. Mate, that's awesome. How do you put that on an FDS? <laughs> that's right. That's a great question. Um, that's a very interesting question. <laughs> Lucky that's ongoing advice. <laughs> Not upfront advice. Yeah, so we're a big user of... Uh, boards and uh, engaging people, everyone runs the same process, we have a five-step meeting process that um, builds a framework for all those type of discussions. You have a five-step meeting process? Yeah, so inside every meeting I do, yeah. every meeting, yeah. and business, whatever, uh, I run through the same meeting process inside the meeting, so not five meetings, yeah. five steps in the meeting um, that I've evolved over time. What are they? Ah, can't tell you too much, it's a secret. <laughs> That's the secret to uh, the success. That's cool. No, um, I appreciate that. It's probably having a clear agenda uh, yeah. for every meeting and understanding that everyone's on the same path, but also it's the client's agenda, not ours. So cool. don't go in with a pre... You know, we've got a set of things that we have to do and that's fine uh, to follow and keep compliant, but for yeah. every meeting, there's a process that we always work to the client's agenda, which is... Um, you know, reflected in your fact finding and scoping and that. But there's things that you know that aren't discussed in a financial plan. Like I just want to make sure that I have knowledge about what superannuation is. Or yeah. so okay, what do you mean by that? And ask yeah. a few questions and articulate that the best I can. So they walk out at the end. You know, they've they've met their agenda. And so are they more likely to engage in our process? Absolutely. So. Um, so the thing that, and we've kind of spoken about sales, but the thing you're really I'd say well known for, but perhaps in the uh, XY community, is um, is marketing. You, so the way that I describe marketing um, is sales represents a gap in your marketing. So a perfect marketing would be someone finds you online and becomes a client without ever talking to anyone. Yep. Right. So that would be a perfect. Marketing, bliss. yeah, <laughs> bliss, absolutely. Um, which is not really going to happen in financial planning. Let's face it. But I believe you can get people a lot closer to sales uh, or to becoming a client with a small sales uh, process. And the better your marketing is, the smaller that your sales gap needs to be need, needs to cover. Um, now, marketing also is almost like the top of the funnel, right? It's how many people are, are coming in and checking out and having a, and want to have a conversation with you. And interestingly, your top of the funnel has grown 400% yep. in the last 12 months. 
Now, that's crazy, right? Like, that is phenomenally amazing. Now, um, I, I hear, you know, people talk about conversion rates and sales will say, I've, I've gone from 30% conversion rate to 70% conversion rate. And, and that's, that's huge as well. But improving the amount of people that even come and talk, like knocking on your door to have that conversation, to improve that by 400%, I mean, that's, a, that's the largest number that I've heard of in terms of financial planning and marketing. So <coughs> how did you do it? <laughs> Uh, so it was, it was oh, like everything. If I, I didn't, um, I didn't know a whole heap about marketing when I started in two thousand three. So it's been a whole lot of uh, learnings and education. But I identified that it's not a strength. So I, I find that if I don't know something, let's go and figure out how to do it. So I think there's an element of that. And then I have a very good outs- uh, outsource or partner that partners with me on implementation, cool. which I've referred to a few businesses already. Yep. Um, so I think there's that, um, and then I think the more important thing, uh, I went back and you know really analysed and understood our brand or positioning. So what is that all about? Uh, effectively, you know, from the time someone engages with our product, our advice, or our you know whatever it may be on our website or social media, it's got to be the one constant message, having the same colour theme or palette throughout yep. is an example. Um, so when they get the experience from when they see us on our website, so they greet one of our people. Uh, whoever that may be, from reception to our advisors, I talk to them about personal brand is a reflection in an external community. So what do we do on our social media? You know, think about what that impact is. Is that reflective of who we are or how we want to show up? Yeah. Through to um, uh, so then, I guess the, through to when they walk in our office, I was, you know, spend a lot of money on making sure it reflects a. It's a one constant throughout. That's probably the the number one thing, and then, and then two, understanding who your audience is, like. You know, if it if you're going to write to uh, about retirement advice, like, do they want to hear? You know, I want to hear a TTR and a, a self-managed super fund, or you know, the, our world. They don't want to hear about our world. They want to hear about how they relate. How much money am I going to have? We know what their questions are going to be. How much money do I have? How am I going to? If we're focusing on retirement here, yeah. how much money am I going to have? How long is it going to last me? And yeah. what happens? When I'm gone? Yeah. So talk about that in the way you write content. And if you're not good at writing content, teach yourself to get good at writing content. Yeah. You can outsource it, but I generally find the advice, we make all of our advisors write two pieces a month. That's achievable. They can record it. They can um, write it. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. We can polish it up with our team yep. behind the scenes, but it gets different perspectives. One of our advisors, uh, Christy, who's worked with me uh, for 15 years, so mainly admin, and then wow. she's now into advising. Wow. And uh, she has had limiting beliefs, which I've challenged and pushed her. But um, even she's writing content. And I like this. Talk about your experience, you know. Mm. Doing your paperwork and it ensures that you get maximum income, as an example. Or, and she's like, oh, it's actually really enjoyable. I'm like, I know. <laughs> You've got to, and share that wisdom so people want to know and connect. So that's probably the few main things. Content. So content's a big thing. Yeah. Rel- rel- relevant content and then... Uh, the success we've had, and is, I literally can now turn it up and turn it down. That's crazy, hey? I know, exa- I, like, I know the keys to success pretty much. And yeah, I'm not, yeah, yeah. I'm going to be careful not to give them to everyone. <laughs> but um, I, I understand your opposition. Treat it yeah. like it's a warfare. Um, right. What would you do if your business is under attack or your family is under attack? Yeah. Um, what would you do? You'd have to figure out a way to defend it. So yes. I went around and um, looked at our opposition. Yeah. And say, well, what do they do differently that I don't? And then how can I be better? So I'm always trying to think of being ahead of the pack. And we've got scale now. So I can spend a week out working in the business, uh, which has been phenomenal uh, here in Cebu, in the Virtual Business Partners. Um, And uh, and then I've got time to work on it and think of things differently to others or analyse. Again, continue to analyse what others are doing and say, how do I do it better? So staying ahead of the pack. Yeah, yeah. Do you... How many advisors work for your multiple companies now. How many, how many advisors do you have? So 10 advisors now at the moment. That's a lot. Like that, that's, a, that's a decent size uh, um, financial planning practice, especially spread across now three cities or three, yep. yeah, three sure. areas. Yep. Um, what, do, you, do you teach them all, you know, let's say, your five-step meeting method? Like, does everyone, does that DNA flood through a, 
Yeah, so um, obviously each advisor comes from a different experience, whether they be young. Yeah. I do like, tra- I've, I think we've done, I've trained now 13 advisors in my life at this time. Yeah, right. Um, and me- I'd rather mentor them from the word go versus, you know, they come in with a preset of ideas and it takes time to show them different. Yeah. From uh, recording a file note to writing on a whiteboard, they're used to doing it from paper to transactions to yeah. typing a file note. So it takes time and you've got to support them through that change. But yeah, they absolutely they do. The other thing we try to do is get them to focus on a, being a specialist. So uh, I believe the industry is going to be more like the legal profession where you have specialists in a certain area um, and there'll be a, you know, a high-ranking advisor with a support crew behind them. Yeah. Um, and ideally you're outsourcing the functions that you shouldn't be doing anymore because yes. it's just not cost effective. Yes. Um, so each of our advi- and so when it links back to the marketing, so we've not only got the advisors and I'm there to train and mentor them whenever they, they like and that includes sitting in the meetings or running the meetings. Um, so we've got that and then when we um, talk about uh, building their marketing avatar, so if they're going to do you know, two areas of advice that could be retirement ready or... Um, and aged care as an example well that's all they're going to focus on for their content uh, mm. that's what we're going to build on their website yep. and, and then ideally as we continue to grow we then refer those advisors to the work that they you know so they get out of bed every day they're not doing uh, yawn cash flow and budgeting uh, yeah. they do exactly what they love doing working exactly the clients they want to do yes. so they get you know the client gets what they want the team come together and they get, get to do what they want yep. and inadvertently we get the culture uh, that we're trying to achieve yeah, um, actually, one of the things that you were talking about is like building a base of content that makes you a specialist, right? Yep. Um, Brett Evans has done so well from this one strategy in expat advice that he's now moved to the United Arab Emirates, <laughs> right? And yep. he's setting up an office over there. Now, it's kind of bizarre but true, this concept that if you're writing a lot of relevant material that people are searching for, you, Google ends up promoting you. And I know that it sounds simple, and yet so few people do it. Um, some strategies I've been learning about recently is what's called a pillar page. Have you heard of a pillar page? No. So a pillar page sits to the side of your website and what it does is let's say let's say you've got an advisor who writes 10 or 20 articles on HK. What you end up doing is you create a pillar page called you know the name of your business forward slash the keyword that you want. And then you write another article and link in all of the current articles, but make sure that they're all linked in. It's specifically Google is looking for this, where all of your content is on one page. Then, um, so, so all of your content is linking in this way. And then from your pillar page, all your content is linking back the other way. So it ends up being this centerpiece with all of your blogs all centered around one page and um, that apparently is the latest way to promote uh, content marketing so um, yeah. well, it's another thing to learn yeah it's definitely another one, thing to learn one thing I think is uh, thrown around in uh, business too is you know know your numbers like which is a key thing you must know your numbers in a business but the second one would be, I think the world is now know your data. So actually understand really? what people are looking for. and right, yeah. So, you know, do look at your Google Analytics and see what people are searching for. Yeah. Um, I think the other thing, probably with marketing, is even sitting here in that room yesterday, yesterday or I think it was, and, um, there's a person in the room who had a marketing degree and still didn't do any marketing. So it's like an investment and it's a thing that we don't like doing, yeah. but the rewards are so profound. So yeah. I think that probably links back to what I said before. Many don't have an up-to-date website. They don't do social media uh, at all. If they do, it's very poor. They're not representing their brand. And uh, it's a massive opportunity and no one's really doing it. And then they'll whinge. Uh, so many times I said, how, how many leads do you get off your website? Oh, we, 
what do you mean? <laughs> I, we just use it for our phone number. It's the new yellow pages. I'm like, you... Uh. No, no. So. Yeah, no, it's... it's um, do you use things like Google Trends, SEM Rush, I believe, is another way to, to find terms that you yep. write content for? Yeah. So, yeah, we get from our... Um, uh, uh, marketing team. I can. I'll mention. You can cut it out if you want. But the, no. the measured marketer, Jackie Daly. Um, so she's. We've worked on a, a month. Well, they've done it. I just asked for it. Yep. Uh, monthly dashboard, so we can see data, leads, uh, all of it in one. And it, it, it costs a bit to do, and it costs a bit each month to re- report. But I can see every business live where I'm spending my money. That's phenomenal. And when someone comes knocking on your door to buy you out at uh, some point in time, perhaps, um, you know, they're going to look at what did you do with your marketing? And, you get, and I can say, well, I've got you know, 36 reports here every month and it shows yeah. how, it, how we built it and the results. Yeah. So versus, oh, we have a website with a phone number. Yeah, it's what? bizarre, isn't it? Do you do a lot of like landing pages? Yep. Yep, content, download, put your, put your email in here. Um, nurture campaign, yada yada yada. Yeah, so it's it's all like sort of at this stage, kind of one hundred and one, and yet you don't meet a lot of uh, advisors that are that are doing this, which right. is bizarre. Do you do workshops at all? Uh, like externally to? Yeah. Or? Well, well, let's say like, do you promote a workshop, or do you always just promote uh, a piece of value, a downloadable piece of value? Yes, yeah, so there's a few things. One we um, obviously is Google AdWords and. Uh, the probably so the probably in short no we don't have time for it <laughs> it's too busy wow. yeah right so you just scope scope uh, so it's all digital then going for a meeting yeah and so we just have a very unique process at once that it's all technology driven out the back of it yeah um, the biggest thing we did was um, promote the book now function and that books directly into our calendar through a, pr- a product called you can book me another right. hopefully they get a kickback somewhere from that. <laughs> Um, and that was the, our lead conversion from people viewing our website to mm. engaging went through the roof it's overnight. Wow. And um, from that was not my idea. That was yeah. a lady in our team who's now our um, what, operations manager, Corinne. That was yeah. hers. She said, what do you think? So we trialled it for $8 a month. Nothing, right? Well, yeah. And that's the biggest learning being over here, considering the technology and so forth that you can use and embrace the life. Like, and almost, I keep thinking at the moment, I need to have, I'm going to, um, she won't know, she will hear this after I've spoken to her, hopefully, Lily, in our team, who came on as an admin lady but loves the technology. So I'm saying I'm going to send her here and say, how do we, you know, her role is going to be technology integration. Yeah. One, because we've got the scale to do it, but the results... Um, the results of using technology are just fast tracking, you know, making our business grow. So things like that. And but most people just wouldn't, uh, you know. There's a good analogy yesterday that it's like there's the wave was coming, and people who have either saw the wave and got ready and paddled onto it. They uh, thought that wave's not for them, so they'll just move to the side. Or before they know, it's crashing on their head. Yeah. And with the news that came out well, this week, you know, with licensees shutting down and booting out advisors, you know that change is going to get faster and faster. So Yeah, it's super overwhelming, like uh, seeing financial wisdom, A&P, take, take these sort of, um, take these positions and, and change so dramatically. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's really overwhelming when you think about how many advisors are, unfortunately, I use that term on purpose, like unfortunately haven't, arrived at what you've been working on for so long you know what I mean so it's now become probably more than ever um, in order to succeed I think we need to accept at this stage that if you're not developing your own leads developing your own um, methodology to bring on new clients to look after your current clients to be able to easily display what your value is and charge annual fees such such little room at this stage such little room to to progress and to provide a lot of value and have a sustainable business and like your business the way that you're you're talking about it is considering if you're focused on uh, content marketing what that does is it says okay well uh person who ends up buying um, this is the marketing system it's already set up so you can now turn up and turn down yep. so that's not something that they have to build build up the the ability 
to do it, build up the infrastructure to to be able to achieve it, and then that kind of that puts a premium on your business. Exactly. You know. So what's a pre? Like if you go from a six times EBIT model to seven times in the future, whatever that calculation is, just because yeah. of the marketing. Yeah. I think you know, and we've, I've been approached a couple of times the last couple of months. Uh, and only a few weeks ago, a guy was like, why don't you bottle that up and sell it? And I said, oh, I've been thinking about how do I leverage off it because it's, yeah. there's not many people that are doing it. And yeah. Do I coach it? Do we, um, yeah. you know, franchise it? Do we, yeah. um, uh, you know, go out and uh, keep doing it? It, takes it? it does take a lot of energy to keep going and we just open up in Sydney. Yeah. Um, but we could easily go and do it in any other, I, could, I feel I could do it in any location and get it right now. Yeah. Um, but I have a very good team behind me. I still do, have been doing a lot of advising still, so I still do see clients. It's oh. getting challenging. <laughs> um, but I have, you know, Jay Beckton who works in our team and he does, I come up with ideas and he implements. So I have a you know, very good team of people around me to be able to do what we're doing. Yeah. Um, so I think that's another thing um, that puts us ahead of the pack and outsourcing. So we've got, say, 24 staff, not all full time. Yep. in Australia and then we've got uh, seven here now and then we've got our um, power planning done out of um, Plan Logic in Sri Lanka so so yeah so where does virtual business partners fit in if they're not doing the power planning? yeah so we um, we built that up slowly um, to a, so I think went from one to three and now six and then seven uh, we've got a mortgage broking and then um, business as well now so we they'll start doing the whole that's a question I actually had. So I never did mortgages as an advisor. Can you just outsource to these guys? Uh, I think that's what they will build. I don't think right. it's, so. We've got a broker in house, uh, Jeff Sawtell, okay, um, yeah. and another brand. So we run it as a um, separate business, I guess, but not. They're in the, it's uh, just a, the old vertical integrated. They're in the lending, and then they. Yeah. It's all. Well, it, Financial planning and the lending will all be done, the processing through uh, here, but the financial planning we've built uh, now, so we have a team leader, uh, Celeste, who is amazing. Uh, they're all so intelligent. Um, I feel uh, inferior, even though they're t- the Philippine psychology, psychology is the other way around. I feel inferior to them, very, very smart. Um, and we've built a process through their uh, structure that we've systemized the whole back end so from um, the day a client walks in mm-hmm. and books on the website, yep. that's through, through our um, threading process, but then they dial in behind it, yep. and we've built it slowly. Now they do everything. Uh, they do implementation, reviews, fact-find prep, uh, ad hoc tasks. We get them doing marketing support, uploading. Um, it's just like having another office in another location. That um, must be so much hard work to get all that done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my but, God. <laughs> Speak to uh, Dave Carney, and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. they got a lot of support structure to do all that. So they've yeah. got flow but charts. But how many years has that taken for you to do? Like uh, to, to, to system first of all, systemize. Yep. Right. I would have thought uh, somewhere between twelve and eighteen months. Okay, that's not as actually as bad as I thought. Yeah. So and uh, it, it just enables our team in Australia to then be client facing. Yeah. Um, you know, they can talk to clients. They can be proactive on the phone. We can uh, identify projects. So, absolutely, we've created scale, yeah. um, and it's been even now reflecting back. I'm like, I didn't really set out to do this. I started with one person three and a half years ago, um, and in a way, I've gone three and a half years to get from where you are now to from where you started. To, what we so you only opened your business three and a half years ago. Yeah, yeah, I set it back up. Um, you know, uh, that's Daniel Brown. That, 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 <laughs> my god that's cool man so so you've got Newcastle financial planning Central Coast financial planning and Sydney financial planning yep. oh, Sydney Wealth Advisors Sydney Wealth Advisors yes yep. so we bought that brand from an uh, XPDM of ours and um, we're only just starting to launch it now um, yeah. but yeah so the, that's where it is awesome <laughs> man well look I mean thanks heaps for coming on uh, now you've done an event and the podcast um, so I think the next is uh, yeah I guess we're just going to have to put 10 people in the room charge them all $100,000 each and you can share all your, uh, your secrets <laughs> uh, but we can do that <laughs> we'll be uh, co-sponsored and it, it's interesting because um, I think XY is just um, I've been so frustrated for never engaged with any other um, um, business or you know Association, if you want to call it that, and with X, Y, and having that, just the Facebook post, and 
you know, reaching out, it was a, um, you, know, you reach out and offer your assistance to people. They're really, I think it's such a um, great idea and concept and will uh, very much support the future and where you're heading. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Cool. Cool. Cheers. Bye. Thanks.